Hello, I am Professor Stephen Abbott and in this series I will be using HSPIP to illustrate some of the power of Hansen solubility parameters. In this clip we will look at how to measure the Hansen solubility parameters of an unknown such as a polymer. In the previous video we saw how the HSP of solvents captured the essence of those molecules. I didn't say where those values came from. Ultimately they come from thermodynamic measurements like enthalpy of vaporization. They also can be correlated with things like refractive index and dipole moment. Suffice it to say that it's a rational process to sort out the HSP of molecules like solvents. It's completely different when it comes to something like a polymer. You can't use these thermodynamic techniques at all. So let's see how it is done in practice. The example here involves polylactic acid, and the data set that I have here is from the open academic literature. What happens is that someone takes some test tubes, in this case 27 of them, puts in a small amount of the polymer into the tube, and then adds a different solvent to each tube, shakes up the tube, then gives a score to say, one, that the polymer is happy in the solvent, is dissolved or is swollen, or zero to show that it's unhappy in that solvent. So hexane does not touch polylactic acid, for example. So it's a very simple process. You just have a bunch of test tubes, a bit of polymer, a range of solvents, score one, happy, zero, unhappy. And then if you have something like HSPIP, you press a magic button, and it calculates a sphere. The sphere, in green, has all the good solvents, the ones in blue, all the ones, inside this green sphere, and all the bad solvents, in red, outside. And the point is that this sphere is unique. If the centre were more to the left, as it happens higher DD, then some of these good solvents would be outside. If it were more to the right, then some of these bad solvents would be inside. If it were a smaller radius or a larger radius, you'd have the same problem. And the center of this sphere is the HSP of the polymer. So in this case, polylactic acid's HSP is 18.7, 7.7, 7.0. .7, and that's it. It sounds too good to be true. And surprisingly, it really is a good technique. And I deliberately used words like happy and unhappy, because although in this case polylactic acid would dissolve in these solvents, in many cases the polymer will merely swell, or you might not have a polymer, you might have some nanoparticles. They will disperse. It's very easy to decide whether something has dispersed well or has dispersed badly. You shake it in the test tube or you ultrasonicate it. You look at it after five minutes or half an hour or a day, and those good solvents where the dispersion is happy will look fully suspended and dispersed, whereas the unhappy ones will just be sitting skulking at the bottom. And people say, well, how much should I use? How much polymer should I put in the tube? How much solvent should I add? The answer is that there is no answer. If you have a high molecular weight polymer, then it's unfair to ask it to form a 10% solution so you have a rather small amount of polymer and a large amount of solvent. If you have a very low molecular weight polymer, which is highly soluble in lots of things, it would be rather stupid to have a small amount of polymer and a large amount of solvent. You, as the scientist, have to make a judgment. And people still get worried about this, but in fact it's very simple to do in practice. Once you've done your first one or two sphere measurements like this, it becomes second nature. But for those who aren't convinced that it's simple, the next video will show how we can measure the HSP of polyisoprene as used in rubber balloons.